Are we finally diving in? We are. <laughs> really? Well, into a portal. Into a portal, yeah. yeah. What we need to do is to log into the portal, the UCSS portal, as a customer enterprise administrator. And you can see from the page that we're showing you at the moment mm -hmm. that we have what is effectively the main menu or the splash page, if you like, for the UC self-service portal. It tells me who I am, yep. as well as gives me a heap of options using the tiles down below. One we're using is the top left, and that's going to be add Tippet users to site. When you add Tippet users, there's a couple of preliminary things you need to do. Firstly, we need to do a site search uh, in order to identify the exact site that we're going to provision these users to. First thing we need to do here is add our customer contact details. Now, that would be the customer themselves, if it's the CEA that, that's ordering it. Right, but when you say the customer, what do you mean? The enterprise, the person, the well, CEA, well, this or is, the user? Well, in this particular case, it would be a technical contact because it's asking for a name yep. and a telephone number and an email address. Mm -hmm. So this will be the person who is, A, going to be contacted if there's an issue, and B, going to receive the email. If it's a partner yep. ordering on behalf of a customer, of then course. the partner may put their details there yeah, as well. Yeah, sure. But that's where they tick the I am a Telstra partner ordering on behalf yeah. of the customer Good. box there, down there as well. So uh, the other thing is you can see there's a non-standard billing uh, required box. Now, mm -hmm. if you tick that, then you would need to provide the details of what the non-standard right. billing looks like. Okay. All right. So, so let's get this filled in. Let's put this in. So... I'll use my own name mm -hmm. since I can do that. Uh, and I'll give you a phone number. Now you can add other emails if there's other people to get these emails. Now, All right. you might do that, for example, if you want the user you're creating to get an email to give them the details about what their user ID, password, and other mm -hmm. things are for their devices or for their soft clients or whatever. So you can often add, uh, add those, and that way you don't have to add a, act, uh, act as an intermediary. Mm -hmm. All right, once we've added that information, we can click Next. Yep. And you can see here we get a panel which confirms the site we're at, and now we get to add the new users. Right. So this is where the individual's name goes in. So it's not the CEA's name. No. It's the name of the the using individual. The user identifier. Yeah. 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 Now, usually a name. Of course, it could be something to do with a, a task. For example, if you're providing uh, a user whose job is going to be a lift phone, mm -hmm. then you might not have an individual person's name so here. You might say lift phone lift one or, phone. or lift one phone yeah. or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Sure. So it depends what it's there for. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so we'll add the name, and why don't we give you a Thanks, service, mate. Toby? Yeah. Now, this is where we have to provide information about the phone number. Right. So what happens is, take this show range. What we get the opportunity to do now is to display the uh, individual phone number ranges that are available at the site. We Great. can click on the range we want. Mm -hmm and then drop down and pick the number that we need. Now, the next thing we need to do is to select the user pack. Yeah. We'll go with something basic like a standard pack mm -hmm. because, well, we know you're not an executive Yeah, yet, thanks Tony. very much, thank you. <laughs> okay, and then you can see, we mentioned supplementary packs in one of our introduction videos. Yeah. You can add these supplementary packs to enhance the experience of this particular user. Great, Now don't we don't need any of those. We don't need any of those, so we'll just leave it out. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can see you can add a second supplementary pack if you like. Yep. And lastly, and this is a very important part of this whole uh, process, is identifying the handset, if any. Now, this particular drop-down does a few important things. Mm -hmm. Firstly, it'll identify anything that you could order that's out of stock. You'll mm -hmm. notice that it's greyed out. The second thing is, you'll notice that it includes ordering new equipment, renting new equipment, or using existing equipment. And the reason that we show existing equipment is because one of the things that the UCSS will trigger when you, when you have completed your ordering process and submitted the order is it will cause Tippet to build profiles for the individual users based on the handsets that they're expecting to use or right. you have indicated that they will use. Now, the reason that's important is because handset profiles include all sorts of settings that make your handset yours. Once you submit this, let's suppose that you are going to use an existing phone. Mm -hmm. Once you have completed this, submitted the order, and then received the email to say that it's been completed, 
in theory, you can plug that phone in and make a call. Yes. I'm going to be generous here, and I'm going to give you the 8865 MPP. And here. it's a new one. Uh, actually, Brand no, we're going to use an existing yeah. one. <laughs> okay, no worries. We'll use the existing one. Okay. So. All right, now, remember we've made the point earlier that you need to remember... Uh, or be aware of, as an administrator, mm -hmm. how are they going to reach Tippett? Are they yep. going to come in via the next IP VPN? Yep. Or over if the they have one, yep. or over the internet. Yep. This is where one of the places where it matters. So we're going to have to identify what we're using here. Our example uh, test environment here, the lab that we're using, mm -hmm. we connect via the internet. So we'll click on that radio button, yep. and then we'll hit next. Great. Now, the last thing we need to do is provide further information for shipping if we were to order something new. So we can have one last look at this. You can see there it's coming in. Remember we mentioned Totty? Yeah. Yep. And Tip MPLS is an alternative. Yes. Okay, there yeah. they are. And so we can submit those details now. And let's see what happens. Success. <laughs> yeah, well done. All right. So you can see there that we've got a confirmation ID and we'll also going to receive an email. All right, good. All right, so we'll close that off and it'll drop us back at the Add Tippet Users page again. Mm -hmm. And we could go through and do some more if we wanted to. Brilliant. You may have noticed that you were limited to 30 users at a time mm. uh, in terms of how many you can order. Now, we can now go away and just check our email and see if we've got an email come in about this. And what do you know? It's already there. Brilliant. Uh, and if you log in with that information there, it will let you in. And here we see the phone device queue set up. These are the numeric username and password values that you'll need to be able to connect on your snazzy new Cisco 8865 MPP. Can't wait. <laughs> uh, you can see that you've got a service pack yep. of standard. Yep. Uh, there's the device there's type, the device just reconfirming that. It's existing. All right, so we've got the email yeah. and, you know. It tells us that we're configured, yeah. well, but let's are check we it. really? Yeah, let's check yeah. it, all right? All right. So, we're starting back here at the UCSS there. portal, and we're going to jump over into the Tippet administration portal. Yes, which Sometimes we have known as the, as the tab. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, and here's one we logged into earlier. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to have a look at uh, first of all, we've got to select the group that we need to look at. Mm -hmm. Now, remember, a group is a site. Yep. All right. Yep. So we're going to bring up our. It's it's search actually for easy our group. to remember. It's a group of um, numbers. That's really, right. When you think about it. So here's the information that we put in earlier, mm -hmm. which is you know the basic sanitary yeah. stuff about who you are. Yeah, my my name, my user ID, yep. what group I'm part of. Yep. It's showing you even that you have access to uh, instant messaging mm -hmm. and uh, voice portal for uh, voicemail, all that sort of stuff. Yep. It's generated a password for you to do that. Yep. So you can see there, there's the phone number that you were uh, you were yep. provided. The it's number. been automatically activated. Great. I didn't have to do that manually, yep. which I would have otherwise had to do. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is it's created what's called an identity device profile. Now, this is the guts of why the process that we use to order this user or mm -hmm. add you as a user to this site mm -hmm. is such a powerful utility because that profile exactly matches what you need as a user at this site at that phone number for that type of handset. So, how about we wrap this video up and then we'll assemble a phone, plug it in, oh, yeah. and get you to log in and, and see if you can and, make a call. And make sure it actually works. Yeah. All right, cool, that sounds great.